Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel. I'm Georgina and this is Art History Girl. Today we're talking about the mini ice age that happened in 16th century Europe and how Bruegel, a Flemish artist, reacted to this crazy weather and basically invented the idea of a white Christmas or a winter landscape in art. And when you see one, you can't help feeling festive. I'm sure you'll have seen Bruegel's winter landscapes on plenty of Christmas cards. In Hunters in the Snow, there are figures skating on frozen rivers, playing early versions of ice hockey, and some people even trying to catch birds. They seem to be making the most of the freezing winter and having a lot of fun, but that might not be the whole picture. For the artist and the ordinary people living in Bruegel's works, these images weren't just about having an enjoyable winter. This cold weather would have been scary and threatening to their very existence. When these paintings were made, Europe was living through a period of intense climate change, now known as the Little Ice Age. The term was first used in 1939 to describe a period of roughly 4,000 years, but it's since been narrowed down to identify a period of intense cooling between roughly 400 and 1850. Within this time frame, many say the 1560s was the first decade of extreme weather and the winter of 1564 to 5 is said to be the coolest winter of the century, so absolutely freezing. Hunters in the Snow and Bruegel's other famous snow scenes were all painted around that freezing winter. The theologian Johannes Molanus recorded that winter as being harsh beyond measure, and it was a time of terrible flooding in the region of Brabant, where it's thought Bruegel was born. He wrote about paupers getting frostbite and losing noses and even hands to the cold and birds falling dead from the sky. During the 16th century, locals were able to open rent-free marketplaces on frozen rivers. The 17th century English diarist John Evelyn wrote that when the Thames froze over, people treated it as a carnival of winter. And in this painting, you can see what Evelyn means. There are fashionable dandies gliding across the solid river while there are visiting booths and tents set up and children playing ball games in the foreground. But for Bruegel and his contemporaries, it was a difficult time as well. During the 1560s, food shortages were almost yearly and there were riots and illnesses throughout Europe. Because most people were still extremely religious, many thought the destruction of their crops or the death of their children were punishments from God and some blamed witchcraft for their terrible luck. Over 30 years later, King James I's treatise on witchcraft mentioned the use of magic to make the weather worse. In Hunters in the Snow, we can see some of this hardship. Three men and their dogs are trudging home from a hunting expedition. They're soggy, exhausted, and hunched against the cold. Their body language gives us a really good idea of how they're feeling both emotionally and temperature-wise. The viewer is also looking over their shoulder, seeing the view as they see it, having returned from their hunt and following in their snowy footprints. As they reach the edge of the hill, we catch a glimpse of the winter wonderland in the valley below them. The merchant Nikolau Yong Hinglik commissioned hunters as part of a sequence of six panels about the seasons to hang in the dining room of his home near Antwerp. Each painting illustrates two months of the year although only four of the paintings in the group survive today. Hunters is meant to illustrate the midwinter months of December and January, and all the others show ordinary people involved in all kinds of agricultural work, so mostly planting and harvesting. But Hunters creates a pause in the series. It's one that reflects the winter holiday Flemish communities took when there was no work for farmhands or labourers. The human figures are frozen both by the weather and by the slow pace of the agricultural off-season. We see this reflected in the hunters too. They've trekked out into the woods to catch some food, only to return with one small, scrawny fox. There's also a stooped figure carrying brittle firewood over a bridge. This person is thought to be a mockery of the women in haymaking, who carry baskets of fruits on their heads in the warm summer months of June and July and the contrast shows how barren the winter months really are. In Hunters, Bruegel's subjects are adapting. This was the coldest winter they'd ever seen, 
but they're still managing to find joy from the bitterly cold environment. And similarly, Bruegel has found beauty in this scene, even though it would have seemed like a very strange subject matter at the time to show a community struggling for food and trying to stay warm. Very little is known about Peter Bruegel the Elder and his origin. One of his biographers assumed he came from a peasant background, which would justify his fascination with peasant life and why there are so many ordinary people in his work. More recent scholars believe Bruegel was a townsman and a highly educated one, and that he would have moved in humanist society. Although this is likely, it would seem that he hadn't mastered Latin, and he relied on other people to add the Latin captions to some of his drawings. It's thought he began his artistic training around 1545, when he was in his early 20s. And after six years of being an apprentice, he became a master painter and he joined the Artists' Union, the Guild of St Luke in Antwerp. Not long after becoming a master painter, Bruegel took a journey across Italy to study the masters of the Italian Renaissance, which was a fairly common excursion for Northern Renaissance artists. His trip lasted two years in total. He spent time in Rome and explored parts of southern Italy. But unlike his contemporaries, Bruegel was unmoved by the work of Raphael, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. It seems as though he wasn't impressed by their dramatic scenes, idealised figures and their love of classical architecture. But on his journey home, Bruegel took a route back through the Alps, and these incredible mountains seemed to impress him a lot more. After Bruegel's death, the biographer Van Mander wrote, while he visited the Alps, he had swallowed all the mountains and the cliffs, and upon coming home, he had spit them forth upon his canvas and panels. Whilst on the road, Bruegel did a lot of drawings and sketches, which he used for later paintings, and from this moment on, nature and man's relationship with it seemed to fascinate him. This influence can also be seen in Hunters in the Snow, where Bruegel has painted alpine mountains in the background. Now, the low countries like Flanders were very flat, so Bruegel has invented these peaks to make the composition seem more dramatic. When he returned to Antwerp in 1555, it was his mass-produced engravings which started to take off. A set of 12 prints, known as the Large Landscapes, first made Bruegel famous, and because it was a series, they were popular and appealed to collectors. Antwerp was the centre of printing in the Northern Renaissance, and Bruegel was working for Hieronymus Kloch, one of the most important print publishers at the time. He continued to design prints for Kloch, but a few years after returning from Italy, he also started painting. And perhaps unsurprisingly, landscape became a huge part of his style. Bruegel also started setting scenes in the landscapes, but they were very small and looked like the figures had been included almost by accident, as though he was painting a landscape and they just happened to be there. Here we can see Christ with his disciples, but the figure on the left is dominated by the huge landscape. And in Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, all you can see of the boy is a leg and a half, lost in a coastal landscape. In this painting, Mary and Joseph can be seen trudging through an enormous landscape, and they look extremely insignificant. The Italians would have made any of these events the main subject of their paintings, glorified them and made them look very obviously special. But Bruegel's works completely reject the Italian approach. As you can see in Census at Bethlehem, the Holy Family are just insignificant figures in a Flemish village. Bruegel painted snow scenes five times after the winter of 1565, and to our modern eyes, it doesn't seem like a radical move, but no one had really painted properly snowy landscapes before him. There are only two known earlier examples. One is a fresco of January in Trent in Italy. It was painted in 1405 by an unknown artist, and it shows some wealthy people having a snowball fight. Then in the Book of Hours by the Limburg brothers, there's a picture for February showing a snowy scene with people sheltering from the cold and a man driving a donkey up the hill. One article I read suggested Bruegel is the JMW Turner of snow. And I like to think he did for snow what Constable did for clouds. He has the ability to recreate snow in all its different forms with various textures. 
In his first attempt at translating snow in paint, Bruegel almost entirely obscures Mary, Joseph and the infant Jesus with a blizzard. But he captures the weightlessness, magical quality of snow surprisingly well as it falls on the Holy Family. Similarly, if you look at the hunter's footprints, you can feel the weight of the man closest to us as he sinks into the snow. He also applied the snowballs in Census at Bethlehem after the painting had dried so that they stuck out off the canvas and were three-dimensional. After Bruegel's snowscapes were so successful, a whole tradition emerged in Dutch art of painting snowscapes and ice fairs, and it lasted for several centuries. So we've discussed that Bruegel loved landscapes, but what's clear from his work is that he was also fascinated by people. That can be seen in Census at Bethlehem, where we see Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem just before Christ is born. The scene takes its inspiration from a passage in St Luke's Gospel, which describes Joseph's return to his home city to pay tax to the Holy Roman Emperor. There went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So here again, it's not obvious that Mary and Joseph are the main characters because the painting is so covered in people. There's a group killing a pig, walkers on the ice, and children even having a snowball fight. Bruegel has transposed the scene into a 16th century Flanders village. And this might have helped people understand the story better because they'd be able to see the story taking place in familiar surroundings. And everywhere you look, a new scene emerges in this painting and it's such a cross-section of life. Something which would have also been familiar to a contemporary audience is the fact that Mary and Joseph had to pay tax. Philip II of Spain ruled over the Low Countries, and he was famous for heavy taxes and waging wars which cost a lot of money to fund. And you can see his flag hanging above the building in the painting. So the census is a cleverly chosen and very relevant subject for the Flemish people. And also choosing to include a religious subject was quite a big statement because Flanders had been in religious turmoil for over 10 years. Philip II was a Catholic and he was intent on stamping out the Protestant Reformation, which was a very prevalent movement in Flanders. Because there were a lot of executions, because obviously he was trying to stamp out the Protestants, there was also a high degree of fear within society. And Bruegel often shows gallows in his work which suggests they were part of everyday life. In Massacre of the Innocents, another of his winter snowscapes, Bruegel has chosen to depict the biblical scene where Herod orders all children under two years old, actually I think it's boys under two years old, to be killed in an attempt to eliminate Christ before he becomes a threat. And in this image, Bruegel has cast the soldiers as Spanish in recognisable black armour with spears, so he's clearly trying to make a comment about Philip II needlessly slaughtering innocent Protestants. Just to link these two paintings back to Snow, I think Bruegel really makes these scenes feel relevant and relatable to people living at the same time as him. They've all lived through such difficult winters, so these paintings really convey that uncertainty and threat to life which would have been associated with the snow. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that video on Bruegel and winter landscapes. He pretty much invented white Christmases, so I think we've got a lot to thank him for. And I also just wanted to mention before I go that um, something else I didn't have space to include. If you couldn't afford to pay your taxes, you often were made to pay through livestock. So it's thought that the pig being slaughtered here was a form of payment in Flanders. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you haven't had snow like us recently. In Glasgow, we had snow last week and it was really cold. And actually, we didn't even have any water for a day because our pipes froze. But obviously, that's nothing compared to how cold Bruegel and all of his friends must have been. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.